What's up everyone? Welcome back to Quest Mode. You guys loved my video where I counted down the top 10 indie games for the Nintendo Switch, but you know what? The PlayStation 4 also has a ton of amazing indies. So today, we're kicking off part 1 of the top 20 indie games for PlayStation 4. Now, this list is based off of Metacritic scores, so it's bound to change as time goes on, but for now, let's get into it. As a huge fan of the original Tony Hawk games, I was super excited when I saw that Ollie Ollie 2 was drawing comparisons to the skateboarding game that started it all. And after playing the game, I could see the similarities, but I also found that Welcome to Hollywood was entirely its own game. Like Tony Hawk, it's all about stringing together impossibly long combos, but here it's more of a requirement than just a way to keep up your high score. If you miss a combo, you lose momentum and you might not be able to make it to the next jump, so the game pretty much forces you to get good. Good enough, at least, to beat the game. And with so many tricks, responsive controls, plus manuals and grinds that allow for combos as long as your skill level will allow, you'll likely want to stick around long after you've rolled past the end credits. Another difference from any other skating game I can think of is that Ollie Ollie's combo system requires you to time your button presses with your landings. It admittedly takes some getting used to, but once you do, everything in this game just clicks and it becomes a ride you won't want to end. Created by Ron Gilbert, one of Monkey Island's original developers, Thimbleweed Park is a total throwback to the LucasArts graphic adventure games that graced PCs back in the 80s and 90s. The game has you exploring a small town as you uncover a murder mystery, and to do so you've got to solve a bunch, and I mean a bunch, of inventory-based puzzles. Like in the classics that inspired it, the puzzles are entertaining, yet they don't pull any punches. You'll still occasionally wander aimlessly as you try to figure out how to solve your current conundrum. But Thimbleweed Park goes some length to bring things up to speed with modern game design. First, it gives you a to-do list, which helps provide direction if you get stuck. Second, it's got a fast travel option, which helps save time. Ultimately, if you're craving an experience that will take you back to the good old days of old-school point-and-click adventures, or you just want to solve an entertaining whodunit, the rich world and sheer amount of smart puzzles will make a visit to Thimbleweed Park well worth your time. The fact that Stardew Valley sits at number 18 on this list tells you something about how many great indies are on the PS4. This is hands down one of the most beloved indie games on any platform, which is noteworthy because it was created by one designer who decided to build a game like Harvest Moon, but better in every way. You start the game by developing your farm, which includes your modest dwelling, some crops, and of course, those adorable cows and chickens. But the game quickly unfolds into more of a life sim than a farming sim. Sure, you've got to water your crops and tend to the sheep, but it's also up to you to make friends, expand your home, and eventually get married and start a family. The game even has you hacking and slashing through a dark and misty mine to harvest resources. The choices and variety are staggering, but no matter how you spend your time, you always feel like you're accomplishing something without ever abandoning your purpose. For those who commit to the experience, it's one of the most rewarding games on any system, which is why so many gamers have sunk hundreds of hours into their beloved farms. Velocity 2X is fast, loud, and violent. In other words, pretty much the opposite of Stardew Valley. Like its predecessor, Velocity Ultra, Velocity 2X is a space shooter that has you blasting your way through narrow corridors, collecting more shiny things than you can count, and teleporting through walls to escape certain death. However, 2X adds something entirely new to the mix. Side-scrolling levels that take you out of the relative comfort of your cockpit. For fans of the original, it's easy to be skeptical that running around on foot could match the frenzied pace of shmupping around in your trusty spaceship. But instead of ruining a good thing, the new levels are genuinely fun. They breeze by at a breakneck clip and make for a much more varied overall experience. And my personal favorite part? Revisiting each level trying to attain a perfect score. 
For challenge junkies, the game serves up a rating system that rewards efficiency and exploration. If you're like me, the temptation to perfect your route will keep you coming back again and again to all 50 levels. What happens when you and three friends are dropped into an archery duel to the death? Welcome to Towerfall Ascension, a frantic multiplayer experience that features over 120 maps and a combat system that seems shockingly simple at first, but continues to reveal itself as you spend more time with the game. Here are the basics. Each player starts with three arrows. It sounds paltry, and it is, but this leads to some incredibly tense ammo management. You see, arrows that miss their target can be picked up to refill your quiver. And with a well-timed dash, you can pick arrows straight out of the air as they hurl towards you. These simple rules, along with other creative gameplay mechanics, make for an experience that's fun for button mashers and strategery buffs alike. All you really need to know is it's one of the best multiplayer deathmatch experiences anywhere. Actually, there is one more thing you need to know, and that's that this game doesn't include an online mode. That's right, it's local multiplayer or bust with Towerfall. So if you aren't a fan of huddling up on the couch with three of your friends, stay away. But if that's your thing, well, so is this game. Night in the Woods is an adventure game that won the hearts of many in early 2017 with its superb dialogue, surprisingly mature story, gorgeous art style, and superb dialogue. Did I mention the dialogue? That's because the writing in this game is that good. You play as an anthropomorphic cat named May who's returned to her hometown after dropping out of college and is now dealing with the uncertainty of adulthood. As in most adventure games, things aren't what they seem and the story soon takes some very unexpected turns. And as I mentioned before, the best moments of this game reveal themselves when you simply spend time talking to the locals. Seriously, some of the characters are worthy of their own game altogether. As for the gameplay, you explore town and collect information, but the game is light on puzzles. That said, it does throw in some light platforming and minigames that mix things up. If you feel like cracking a smile, falling in love with some well-written characters, and meandering through a surprising story, this game might be right up your alley. What is there to say about The Witness other than to call it a monumental feat in game design? Okay, there's a lot to say about this game, but that's the TLDR version. Designed by indie mastermind Jonathan Blow, The Witness drops you off on a mysterious island to solve literally hundreds of ingenious puzzles. But when I first saw the line drawing mechanic the majority of these puzzles use, my first impression was that it was, well, basic. And I wondered how The Witness was gonna keep things interesting. But if there's one thing to know about Jonathan Blow, it's that you should never underestimate his creativity. Yes, you'll be doing a lot of connect the dots stuff, but the way this game mixes things up is nothing short of inspiring. Sometimes you might have to solve a puzzle using sound, or by shifting the perspective at which you're looking at it, or by shifting the perspective at which you're looking at literally the entire island. And what brings it all together is how the island itself is one giant puzzle to be solved. It's a mystery that never stops unraveling until the very end, and I encourage every gamer, especially those with an interest in game design, to experience The Witness. Nowadays, it seems like so-called Metroidvanias are a dime a dozen. But make no mistake, Guacamelee remains one of the very best and not just because it lets you play as a super buff, recently resurrected luchador named Juan. As with many games of this ilk, Guacamelee is built around a core mechanic. In this case, it's the ability to teleport between the land of the living and the land of the dead. And while both the story and gameplay revolve around the topic of death, you'd never know it at a glance because the dark theme is juxtaposed by a bright visual motif and a pitch-perfect sense of humor. But humor alone does not a great game make, and thankfully, Guacamelee's gameplay is equally stellar. The puzzles, platforming, and combat make the most of your ability to switch between realms, and your progression through the world via new abilities always feels rewarding. 
As for combat, it's fluid, fun, and one of the more unique aspects of the game, utilizing a color-based combo system that you'll have to master if you hope to defeat the game's tougher bosses. And don't forget the extra content. Super Turbo Championship Edition includes all the DLC for the original game, making this a fantastic value. Next up is one of the last games developed by Housemark, the studio responsible for classic twin-stick shooters like Rezogun, Super Stardust Delta, and Dead Nation. If you've never played a Housemark game, prepare for a difficult yet thrilling arcade experience that mixes old-school sensibilities with jaw-dropping modern effects. This is bullet hell, or in this case, laser hell, at its finest. You make your way through five stages using your blaster and a life-saving dodge ability as you collect power-ups to increase your strength and your likelihood of defeating the obligatory yet spectacular end-stage bosses. If you die, or rather, when you die, you have to make your way back to the same spot to regain your power-ups. Yes, it's punishing, but it remains satisfying. That's because the controls are so precise that you can only blame yourself when you bite the dust and you can take full credit when you finally beat the game into submission. For those who like a little pain with their pleasure, check out Nex Machina. As a first-person puzzle game with heavy philosophical leanings, the Talos Principle draws inevitable comparisons to The Witness and the Portal series. As you set out to discover the world before you, it's soon revealed that you're not in fact human. Rather, you're a robot and much of the game's narrative revolves around exploring what it means to be human, or to want to be human. But while that stuff is interesting, the main draw here is the vast array of puzzles. The Talos Principle is divided into 120 challenges, each presenting you with a set of tools that you are free to explore and utilize in any way you see fit. None of these items are particularly gimmicky, and some are even rather basic, such as blocks, switches, and laser beams. But unlike a lot of games that feature similar puzzles, those here are complex and they provide an unprecedented level of freedom. It's entirely up to you to figure out how to use your given resources to solve your current predicament. You might spend a good amount of time totally stumped only to revel in the epiphany that you weren't using that fan, laser beam, doorway, or seemingly arbitrary puzzle piece in just the right way. It's hard to explain how triumphant you feel after completing some of these puzzles, other than to say it's the closest you'll ever feel to MacGyver if MacGyver was a self-aware autonomous robot. Well, thank you guys so much for watching the entire video. If you enjoyed it, please drop a like. And if you want to see more content just like this, let me know in the comments. And if you never want to miss one of my videos, all it takes is clicking that subscribe button. We'll see you in the next video.